Hello. Okay, thank you, Lolita, for the reminder, because I already did forget. <laughs> Knew I would. All right. Anybody want to talk? Am I well, the talker? I'll talk. Uh, <laughs> what what I wanted what I wanted to remind her, we know how, how bad the mealy bug problem is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, mealy bugs are on the island. Because I I I'm at my daughter's house. I, my computer didn't work, but she had mealies on her on her plumeries on her deck. And uh, they was just getting started. So if anybody goes out there, make sure you check for the mealy bugs, make sure you check for for the the, the rust and anything else you can figure out uh, that we might have. But I, I'm not saying they're here, but I'm saying they might be. Mm -hmm. and it's very important to get them quickly and right away. Yes, yes. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, that is definitely one of the things I was looking at today. I did not see any, but that doesn't mean, you know, tomorrow or next week it, it won't be different. So um, we definitely are probably going to be reaching out to Renee. Renee has um, helped us in the past. Uh, Renee, I don't mean to put you on the spot, um, but we may be able to work with Renee on making sure to get the grounds covered and we get pretty fast coverage with her um, with her spray device. So Renee's coming on. I'd be happy to help. Uh -oh. I can't hear you very well, Renee. Oh, really? Oh, there you are. Okay. I'm on my Okay, you're breaking up. I'd be happy to help. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, so we've got about another six minutes. Uh, no one else has logged in so far. Um, What's blooming, guys? What's blooming at your house? Oh, I need to mute everybody, right? I've got pink pansy blooming. Nice. Hey, this this is Randy. Just a quick question for Ron or somebody for with regards to mealybugs. What's a good spray to put on it to kill those things if you get them? Uh, uh, some kind of a, a, a spray with, with a, a soap mixture in it. Randy, we couldn't hear you, Ron. Something, something that has, has a, a, a soap mixture in it. Oh, soap. Uh, there, and you, you can do it as simple. If you do see them, if you just take it, some alcohol, put it on a, on a cotton cloth, and just wipe all the leaves off if there's a small problem. But if you've got a big problem, of course, you're going to have to bring out the big guns. Okay, and, uh, thank you. The, t the two brick system doesn't work too good with those either. Do you have the password? Y'all know the two brick system, right? <laughs> like this? Ow. Smash in between two. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So I received a message. I'm, I'm having trouble because it's on my iPad, but did we ever send the February minutes? I believe I did send the February minutes with the March newsletter. Yes. Uh, yes, right. And because we didn't have meeting in March, um, everybody should have them. Here comes Rebecca. Rebecca's joining in. All the way from. Are you having trouble? Uh, I just, <clears throat> no, I can't Okay. All right. So she's here, uh, just um, we haven't been able to hear her yet. Maybe it's a connection thing. <clears throat> Has been any, any of y'all been out to the gardens lately? Me. Melissa was out this morning. I mean, yesterday morning, this morning. This morning. Yeah, this morning. 
I, I've been out for, for, for about a week because of the rain, but I've been watering every week. And uh, once a month, I've been weeding coast will let you in soon. Salt and weeds is one of our big problems. I've been weeding also. So if you ever get by and you see weeds or whatever, pull them because they're getting out of control. I got them back under control, I think. It looks really good out there, actually. When I walked, I, I was a little anxious because I thought I was going to see a lot of um, a lot of weeds, but no, I did not. Take care of them. All righty. All righty. So just so just um, a little bit of information. Mary Jane Kroll just messaged us right now. It said, I'm not sure if you need this information, Lolita, but it's a 9.15 to 10.15 class. Yes, on grafting session. Yes, on advanced sign up by Thursday. You know, you had given us a fill in, but maybe you had already read that as well. Okay. All right. So officially, at, hey, Rebecca, how are you doing? I'm good. Very good. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping. What we said when we start the meeting, we're gonna go ahead and mute all the participants so that we can get through the sections we need to. We have a lot to discuss. Um, and then around 7.30, 7.45, Ray Allison, the president of the Plumeria Society is supposed to jump in and he will be our guest speaker. So, um, I had messaged him um, with the meeting invite again. So again, we just ask during this time that while we're learning and we're, we're working with Zoom for the very first time for a general meeting, that you um, stay on mute. If Again, if you do have something you want to voice or it's time to vote, we will go ahead and unmute everybody. <clears throat> All righty. So I think it's safe that uh, we could get started at 6.59. Y'all want to go ahead and call the meeting to order or wait till 7 o'clock? We'll start now. It's good enough. Okay. Okay. So again, a little bit of housekeeping. The copy of the bylaws are with Stephanie. Because we haven't been able to meet, if you don't have a copy of the bylaws, you can feel free to reach out to us at pssttcorpus at gmail.com, and we can figure out a way to meet up with you, maybe during one of the work days or at the South Texas Botanical Garden and Nature Center in order to get you a copy of those bylaws. Garden Senior Center form, they had wanted us to complete that um, for all members at this time. They have stated they're not sure when they're going to reopen, so that's not an issue right now. And um, again, we're going to call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. <clears throat> so I am going to mute myself, and I'm going to go ahead and just give it on over to Stephanie. We've, we're aware of all the February meeting, but um, just so she can repeat that y'all did receive that. Okay, guys, so um, the February meeting minutes were in our newsletter from March. Um, I think everybody received that in their email. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and get a motion to approve the minutes that were sent out in that newsletter. Uh, it looks like I have a motion from Melissa. And I'll take a second. Looks like Lolita. All in favor? I see a couple hands. I can't see you all at the same time. <laughs> all right. So it looks like the meeting minutes have passed from February. I'll turn it over to Terry now. We got to unmute you, Terry. Good. 
Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. We renewed the um, P.O. box for the next year. It was $148. We also purchased an additional key because we only have had one key, the key that I have to the post office box. And it's a really long trip to the post office back and forth for me. So um, the Garden Club, um, the Capital Area, um, the Capital Area Garden Club and the Texas Garden Club and the South Texas Botanical Garden dues are all paid and all sorted out and all cut up. It seems like um, we weren't the only one that had some issues transferring from the previous board members to the new ones. And so once we started calling saying, did you get our check? Cause we mailed it. And then they were like, well, we got that check, but we didn't get this check. So anyway, we've all got it sorted out. Um, our check in balance in the Navy Army Federal Credit Union is $15,431.95. And in savings, oh, I'm sorry, it's $16,227.42. And in our savings, we have $14,590.66. Our PayPal balance is $57.48. We had some new memberships come in in the past couple of um, weeks. I just transferred a little over $900 from our PayPal account to our um, primary bank account, the Navy Army account. We pay most of our stuff from the bank account. PayPal pulls it from there so that we have like a single stream that captures every um, expense that we have. And um, then we, um, we have a $500 memorial donation for, um, from the hostlers. And what else? We purchased some tools and supplies for the botanic, for our um, greenhouse and the botanical gardens. Um, it totals three hundred seventy-one dollars and fifty-six cents. Uh, we we got a reciprocating saw, batteries, and stuff that we can use when we're out there, and also to use with um, the fosters that we have that we're caring for out there. And then we have a little bit of a of an issue that's ongoing with some of the extra batteries that we bought for that saw, and so they don't quite fit like they were supposed to. So Kevin Hendrickson is working with Kevin. Kevin. Um, is working on getting the batteries, the extra batteries we bought that don't fit returned for smaller batteries. Because Lolita was mentioning that with the the battery that we got that has all the extra juice in it, it makes the saw really heavy to hold after a period of time. So we're going to try and get those lighter batteries so it's easier to use. And that's all I have. Okay, so we're going to go over the president's report. Um, One, Melissa, yes. can I uh, make a motion to approve Terry's report? Yes, sorry. Motion to approve Terry's report. Yeah, and I need a second. Okay. Lalita, second. All in favor? Aye. I see hands going up everywhere. All right, next. Okay, so on to the president's report. The first thing that we have on the agenda to report is that we have solidified a venue for the July Plumeria cell. Uh, the sellers committee has been meeting and we've been looking at venues and what our options are. We've also been contacting the Garden Senior Center. And again, we had determined as the sellers committee that if if we waited for that venue, potentially we would lose any options for a venue to sell this year in July. The nice thing about this, the venue that we have selected, which is at the South Texas Botanical Garden and Nature Center, is that it's going to be outdoors and a portion of it for some of our sellers can also be indoors. So we'll be discussing that um, a little bit more and send you some more information. But the sale will be on July 18th, and it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Members can access from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. All sales must be made by 10 a.m., including members. No one will be able to 
hold any plants and after 10 a.m. Okay. Um, you'll just give me one second. Okay. So it's extremely important. We've sent out an email. I still need to send out the um, publisher file, I believe it is, of what varieties or colors that you're going to have for sale. And that needs to be in by... Please. So that we need to make sure that we have that. Um, I, I got ahead of myself, actually. Um, what we're really trying to do is get a list of sellers. So some people have responded, um, but, but right now we're having to reach out to others. So like for instance, Pam, I called you and I texted you and I asked, are you going to sell? Because I hadn't received an email from you. And so we'll continue to do the same with previous sellers that we haven't heard from via email, because again, we wanna make sure that we get your list in, in time, okay? Um, our guest speaker this evening is going to be, again, Ray Allison, president of the Plumeria Society of America. The topic is going to be how to register a seedling. We also wanted to discuss using the greenhouse throughout the year um, for our cuttings and also any donations we may receive. It's the perfect environment. We have a little more accountability. Um, we can start to inventory stock. And at the end of the day, it also reduces burden on individual members. But we don't want to burn you out in any way caring for so many cuttings. We also um, are looking at purchasing healthier named varieties for some of our sad trees, such as Japanese lantern, candy stripe. And um, we'll be reaching out to some members of the Plumeria Society of America or other individuals via social media. We need to make a motion to make a line item for the July sale on the annual budget, which um, will include um, soil, tags, pots, perlite. Originally, when we approved the budget for 2020, it was at $300, but we need to look at increasing it back to $800. Um, with all those cuttings we had, we needed to purchase soil, perlite, um, and so, we're gonna go ahead and, Stephanie, make sure I'm saying this correctly, we're gonna make a motion to increase the line item for plant sales back to $800. Do I have a, mo do I have, okay, Lolita? Okay, well, Lolita and Pam, a second, all in favor? Aye. <clears throat> um, we'd also at this time like to propose Kevin Hendrickson as co-curator. Ron, you do a lot of work out there and we realize that it's a lot of work uh, to maintain the collection. Um, we'd like to, to propose Kevin Hendrickson as co-curator. I'm not sure if we have to motion on that. We have question mark. Uh, anybody have any advice out there if we need to do that? or is it just a, a, a committee position he's willing to accept? I'll pick you. <laughs> All right, I believe, Ron, I believe Ron said he'll take him. All righty, we, we need a lot of help out there. Uh, those trees don't take care of themselves. Okay, so at this point, COVID-19 is going to impact our way of participating indefinitely. So right now we're moving to Zoom meetings for our, oh, one moment, I've got someone coming in. Right now we're moving to Zoom meetings and email participation. And for those who cannot participate via technology, we're looking at make, making a call or you know doing some one-on-one -on -one, um, in order to make sure everybody feels included and, and that we, that we take that into consideration. Maybe some individuals don't have access to some of the technology. Okay. I have no idea who 828 is. I hope they don't flash us. Just saying. Okay. Hopefully that's a safe person. 
Okay, so next we're going to go on to um, I, I I talked to Helga today. She stated it wasn't an issue, but we wanted to look at possibly reimbursing for any extra time or money, depending on her cellular service that it takes for her to call our individuals um, to remind them of meetings, now to remind them of Zoom meetings. That's something we're gonna be looking at and, it, and it's on the agenda. Um, we'd also like to stop donations and pick up of plumerias at this time. Um, social distancing phases for reopening, social gatherings, you know, are, we still have that as an issue. So we wanna just maintain our current collection um, with the exception of those sad trees and then reevaluate in 2021. And uh, that concludes my uh, section of the report. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and we're going to open. We're going to have Lolita present the vice president's report. Hey, everyone. So Melissa mentioned very briefly about the um, switch to the botanical gardens, uh, our plan. So the sellers committee, the plan that we have moving forward is our senior sellers, senior vendors that are um, potentially at risk for being in the heat, we are going to offer them the indoor space first and foremost. Um, there is a total of eight tables that we are allowed to place on the interior of the education building. And that's where we're going to, that's where we're going to house the sale is at the education center. We're going to utilize the interior of that building as well as the platform. Um, based on space and the garden requirements, um, we have to stay within policy and do proper social distancing. We will be at a 50 participant max capacity during that time frame. So um, what that means is we are going to need extra volunteers to help with um, managing the crowd. Um, in addition to an entry point, an exit point, potentially having shoppers like runners to assist those that cannot make their way up the ramp. Um, those details will be finalized at our walkthrough on June the 20th. That's why it's imperative that everyone, if you want to sell and you are an active member, um, we need your name. We need to know what your intent is. Right now we're sitting at one table um, and I apologize, but it's just it's our current situation and that's what we have to offer is one table per seller, per vendor. Um, you're more than welcome to store residual product behind you, in front of you, in your vehicle with the windows down. I mean, however you deem necessary. But um, again, we're planning right now as though our current situation is gonna follow through or carry through as, um, as the time frame we're in. So that being said, again, each vendor will have access to one, I believe it's an eight by 10 table, don't quote me on that. We have to get the exact dimensions from um, Ms. Dr. Womack, um, but that is currently what we are planning for. Um, we have right now, I think 12 individuals signed up to participate, to be active sellers, vendors, um, so we have some space for additional vendors that are active members. If you choose to do so, please email us. Um, Melissa will go over the instructions for that, I guess, at the end in our wrap up. Um, so again, we can only have a maximum of 18 sellers though. Unfortunately, again, due to space and social distancing regulations or guidelines, um, and that's what we have to plan for right now. We will have a total capacity of 18 sellers and we're sitting at 12. So if you know of someone, if you're watching tonight, if, you're, if you view the recorded video 
and you are an active member and would like to participate or you would like to sell during the sale, please contact us at your earliest convenience. Um, thereafter, we will, we're working on putting together seller packets. So in the packet, um, the reason your lists this year are gonna be vitally important to us is we are going to have to count out labels prior to handing out the packets. So again, planning as though we're not going to be able to meet face-to-face, one-on-one, and have a seller's meeting. Obviously, we'll do a Zoom meeting and we'll go over the packets at that time, but this stuff all has to be prepared in advance. So those lists are very important with regards to the numbers and for us to publicize. I don't know how many of you follow us on Facebook or if you keep up with the postings on Facebook, but we have a great populace of individuals that ask on a daily basis, whether it's private message, whether it's um, you know just discussion topics, they're asking for names, they're asking for varieties, they are asking for colors even. Um, so just saying that you're going to sell a no ID isn't doing our, our populace any justice. Um, we have folks that are driving in from Austin, from Dallas, um, various areas throughout South Texas, and they want to know that the drive is going to be worth their effort. Um, so we have, as, as in the past, our goal is to publicize that list a week in advance of the sale. Um, so we need your help. We need your help if you're a seller to get that list together. Mel's going to send out, I believe it's a publisher spreadsheet, and it's going to be um, really easy to populate. It, there's going to have a column for variety, a color for number, like so chemo three um and your table number again going back to the packets real quick i apologize but going back to the packets real quick you can expect to find your tags if you've turned in a list all lists are going to be due i believe it was the 24th of june that gives us plenty of time that gives you plenty of time or sorry packets will be handed out on the 24th um, they will be due on the 20th. So again, June 20th, that's plenty of time to get your inventory together and to populate that spreadsheet so that we can do right by our um, buyers. The packets will include your tags, an example of how to do the tags. We're hoping to have a map of the setup by then. Um, we are going to walk the venue and sort of situate the tables. We're going to try to keep the numbers in keeping with past sales. So, um, but realizing that the venue has changed and if you, you know, if you're assigned a different table, I'm gonna apologize up front right now. We're gonna try to keep it as close as we can to what it used to be. But again, we wanna take care of some of our um, members that need to be in the AC and those that can bear being out in the open a little bit better. So that's gonna kind of shift the table numbers. Um, we're also gonna raffle tickets, or we're gonna sell raffle tickets at the sale. Um, the raffle tickets are going to be for large donation trees that we received from Greg and Nancy Stewart. Um, we will discuss the seller's COVID relief portion of this, uh, of the sale, the contribution at the seller's meeting, or we will send that out via email. Um, it is something that the board has discussed. It's something that the committee has discussed, and it's something that has been, I don't know, Mel, do we need a motion for that to, to pass the COVID relief? Yes, okay. So um, should I, no? <laughs> okay. So Sorry, I had, I had to unmute myself. Um, no, um, I believe what we discussed here based upon the sellers committee, even though it goes against the bylaws, the bylaws never planned for a pandemic illness. Um, and this is unprecedented. So based upon the sellers committee, those who chose to be on the committee and participated in the meetings, um, and this is a one time only, I, I don't believe it needs a motion, but some of the other members within our group may know a little bit more than we do, but you know, I, I don't believe it needs a motion. Okay, 
So with that being said, that information will be emailed um, to all sellers that have, are currently signed up. And if you choose to sign up with um, Melissa, then that information will be relayed at that time to you as well. Um, please understand that this is a work in progress. We've never gone through a pandemic. We've never had to change locations. Um, it's a new board as well. So we're all kind of trying to figure this out together. Um, we have received new tags, just an FYI for future use, those tags that um, John normally orders. Uh, we, are, we do have access to them and we have them on hand, um, but they are almost becoming obsolete. So we're looking for additional resources or different ways to potentially tag um, seller items at the sales. We have enough, I believe, to last us this year and next year based on the order that we placed and received. Um, but according to the company, those tags are also, they're no longer carrying them on their website. And once the inventory is gone, it is gone. So just something for future thought. Um, again, with only having one table available for each seller, we're, we're gonna ask, we're gonna have areas roped off. Um, so we have to take safety into consideration. So if you are a seller of larger trees, that's something that you want to think about now, perhaps in placing behind your table. Um, we just can't have trip hazards and so on present on the deck. Um, I say I'm a lot, I apologize. Let's see. If you know of anyone that is willing to help, we're gonna need, um, so we have, we have lots of rooted cuttings, well over 100. Um, rooted cuttings, both based on cuttings we made in November of last year, um, and also donation cuttings that we received from, or rooted seedlings that we received from Nancy and Greg Stewart. Um, so stuff has the exact count or thereabouts, but um, we, we have well over 100. So we also have at least six large full grown trees that we are going to raffle at the sale. So the point to that is we need physical help. Um, at the gardens, if you are a seller, again, you will be able to set up the night before. We're still working on the time frame. We'll have that locked in and, you know, we'll let everyone know when that is or what that time frame is. Um, but we're also going to need help as a, as a society. We're going to need help in transport transporting those trees and cuttings from the greenhouse to the education center. So if you've got an army of young women and men that are able to help, please start trying to lock that in now. The other benefit of keeping uh, or doing the sale at the botanical gardens was that we were able to keep the same date to lessen that confusion. Um, other venues that we looked at, uh, we weren't able to secure July 18th, which isn't a big deal, but we have been advertising that date. So um, they were able to accommodate us then. And I'll say briefly, and then I'll, I'll, I will be done. It, the reason we're not using the pavilion portion of the, the botanical gardens is um, we need Wi-Fi access or we need internet access to be able to run the um, PayPal checkouts, or sorry, not PayPal, but the checkout stands. Terry needs internet access on the iPads. Um, we also need electricity for various reasons. Um, and again, we wanted to be able to provide and keep the sale contained, but also provide a shaded cool area for some of our sellers that need that. Um, and don't have, you know, the ability to be outside from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay, with that, I think I will wrap up. Okay, thank you, Lolita. <clears throat> so we're going to go through our committees. Uh, that's the next item on our agenda that I can see here. Um, not a lot has changed, just um, we're adding co-curator Kevin Hendrickson. And um, we wanted to let you all know that we did have strategic tree placement in the grove. This was news to me, by the way. 
Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, sorry. I was like, who's that? Okay, but going back to the uh, tree placement, um, so Greg and Nancy Stewart donated Elizabeth Thornton's 4th of July. And so we have that, if you receive the newsletter, that picture that's on the front of the main newsletter is a picture of 4th of July and um, Paula Furtwängler sent it to me from the Plumeria Society of America. Um, it's very difficult to find a lot of um, Elizabeth's collection, um, you know, is going away. And so that's a very special edition that we have received um, by the Stewarts. And so we're very excited about that. We also received Rose Red, which is Elizabeth Thornton variety and Texas Star. So those are now in the grow. And um, I finally put Purple Jack in. I apologize, it took me so long. I just kept forgetting, I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna move on to unfinished business. Um, we wanna look at getting enough prints from members, or even right now as we're starting to get a lot of blooms and beautiful bouquets out at the Grove, um, so that we can get to print in, probably by June 15th, we can get to print uh, calendars for 2021. That, I, I know that sounds, you know, far reaching, but people do like our calendars. We're not gonna order as many, but we are, this will be the first time that we have 20, we have the following year for sale at our annual Plumeria sale, instead of trying to sell the remainder of the current year. Um, <clears throat> the tree signs are currently still in process. Um, the company had a delay due to COVID. However, they stated that they're going to, or they are back up and running. There should be no issue printing those signs. Um, so we just need to continue to upload via Dropbox. Um, and they're able to access those files to make the plaques for the trees. The uh, Plumeria Grove map, Sherry had emailed it, and uh, I believe it's completed with the new additions. You correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Sherry? Yes or no? No, okay. Okay, so that was sometimes I dream and I think things are done, but um, so we added some new additions. I thought I sent you a picture. Let me unmute you real quick. Let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, okay, there we go. Sorry, Sherry. Oh, un unmute yourself, Sherry. I marked it on my map, but I forgot to send it to Larry. Okay. So I need to send it over to, but I do have it marked on my map and I guess we need to get that to the Grove. Do they need that too? Yes, um, the Grove really likes to have a copy of our map because when we have visitors or when they have visitors, um, they like to pass out a copy of that map and people can see, you know, which variety is, um, okay. is planted, you know, in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Larry's the one who draws everything. I mark it on my working map and then he finalizes it. So let me get with him. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Right. And then mute. Alrighty. So the next thing is, is, um, shirts. We have the shirts to print. Um, well, it is going to be working on getting some shirts and then we'll be taking them to monograms and more. They do have limited hours still because of COVID. Um, and so I'm, I just need to send her a message. I didn't get to do that today, but to see what is going to be the turnaround time. If we get those to her by June the 15th, let's say, you know, will she be able to have them printed by within two weeks, within a week? Um, we just need to check on that. So we have some shirt inventory to sell um, at the July Plumeria sale. Let's see here. Name tags, we've pretty much delivered all the name tags to each member. We ask that you maintain your own name tag, keep it with you. That way, if you're volunteering outside of a, an assigned work day, you'll at least have the um, organization that you're with, but also your name. And so people can um, just, you know, have, have your name that they can address you by. 
and it just helps to brand Plumeria Society of South Texas a little bit more. Devices and PayPal readers, since we'll have Wi-Fi connection at the botanical gardens, we have a donated iPad device, we have access to another, and then we're looking to purchase one more so that we have a total of three checkouts for card readers. I believe Terry stated she ordered two more card readers today. Okay. New business, we have an upcoming workday on June the 20th. We've got a, a lot of tagging to do in the greenhouse. Um, I, I hope I said that correctly. I believe we were going to be tagging. We're also going to be doing a walkthrough of the Grove, but a walkthrough of the educational center just to make sure we can plan out the layout for the sale and do a test run of our devices as well to make sure that they connect to the Wi-Fi uh, so that we're better prepared for the July sale. On July the 11th, we have the um, Plumeria talk. I am going to unmute myself because I know that Lolita told me quite a bit about what she found out, but I just wanted to recap for all of you. That way you can um, get a little bit more information about the cost and whatnot for that Plumeria talk. Okay, so Plumeria Talk 101 um, is happening on July 11th. They are doing pre-registration, they meaning the gardens, botanical gardens. So if you're interested or you know someone that's interested that would like to attend that talk, they have to register via the botanical gardens. Um, if you are a member, the talk and the tour are free to all botanical garden members. Um, if you are a non-member and you would like to attend the talk only, the cost is $5. Um, if you would like to attend the talk and then tour the gardens, meaning the rest of the botanical gardens, then the regular entry fee will be applicable. Um, and I think the regular entry fee for an adult, an adult is $9. And there's various discounts for active duty military, seniors, children, um, so on and so forth. But the general admission is $9 for non-members. Um, we're gonna start off at the Education Center. We, meaning Melissa, um, is gonna start off at the Education Center. There she will do a, a grafting demonstration. Um, and we will also have, not rooted, sorry, we'll have cuttings from a donated island, very pretty pink plumeria. Um, we're gonna offer dollar cuttings that day, that morning, and only over at the Education Center. Uh, that way, individuals that, that do not want to tour the gardens have the opportunity to purchase those cuttings then. The idea of offering the $1 cuttings is to, um, get folks interested in the society and also bring them out to the gardens um, in addition to getting them hyped for the sale the following week. Um, there will, sorry, the tour begins or the talk begins at 9.15 and it's scheduled or slated for exactly one hour, so 10.15. Um, additionally, we are looking for volunteers again to assist that day and only because we're doing a grafting session and we'll be selling cuttings. So if you're available and you would like to help and you are an active member, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, you can reach out to us, Facebook, email, text message, however you would like. Um, let me look really quick. I know we received a text message. Uh, I think Mary Jane confirmed that signups, okay, so final point is all signups for that talk are due to the gardens by July 9th. Um, and you can contact the Botanical Gardens directly, or if you're there visiting, you can sign up in person. And that's it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, other work days we, we do need to look at, um, even, even though we may not all meet up together at the gardens, definitely try to make it out there any day of the week or on a weekend, but we're trying to do two 
work days a month through November, and we're looking at every, or bi-monthly, it says bi-monthly, but it actually then here it says every third Saturday following social distancing. It's really important we try to get out there and maintain the collection because Ron did have a good point. We've got to worry about mealybugs and other pests. Um, then we can assume based upon last year's growth that the grove is just going to explode and each tree is going to grow into the other regardless of how much space we had in between them. And you know that needs to be cut back so that we have good airflow and again we can reduce pest in the grove. So it's really important if you're not hearing something or we're not meeting together, that's okay. In order to be an active member, we just need to still try to get out there, put in the time, put in the work um, with the Plumeria Grove and um, report any abnormalities to us so that we can address them very quickly. Um, old business, um, that's about it. We, we had already discussed t-shirts, calendars, and devices. I think Sherry had a question. Okay, uh, let me just see here. Okay, there we go. I asked to unmute you. When I was out there, I noticed several of them that were leaning from the storms that had come through. And of course, they had the heavy stakes that were in there, which I couldn't remove. So I noticed several of them that need to be restaked. Is that something that you want to wait till uh, the work day in June or did, have you already taken uh, notice that also? It was your, uh, uh, not yours, but the University of Hawaii and then the other one was on the opposite side, uh, a, a bigger one. Let me look at my map. And so, but there were two that I noticed when I was walking it that were leaning pretty good. One was leaning towards the platform and the other one, of course, was leaning, uh, was a younger plant that University of Hawaii was leaning, and, and both of them needed to be restaked. Yes, so definitely, I, I think um, Ron and I had maybe talked about going out last Saturday, but uh, I had been in Laredo all week, and I, I wasn't up for it on Saturday. <laughs> but definitely, if, if anyone can, can definitely help, um, yes we can do that much sooner because again we don't know if we're going to get another storm or high winds and that you know that tree is just and those limbs are just going to keep falling more and more and we can have damage so i see here that um ron has something to say i'm going to mute you ron uh -oh. you just muted yourself ron did you want to say something Uh oh, can't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. We expected this. Let's see. Ask to unmute. I can't force the unmute for some reason. He has a space bar. He can hold it down while he speaks. Oh, okay. How do we let him know that? Hold your space bar down. Uh oh. You have to hold it down while you speak. You can't let it go. see here. I'm going to look at more options. There you go. You can, well, it was, um, there you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. Can you repeat that all over again? We missed it. Yeah. I, I, I usually go out there about, uh, about once a week, sometimes twice a week. And it, as I go through, I do a lot of Okay, do we lose him? I think we lost him. Okay, might come back in. So um, just to address that that concern, Sherry, definitely um, uh, Gordon, myself, um, I believe even Kevin, Lolita, you've gone out there a lot, Stephanie. Um, we're going out there, and so we can definitely add that of, of the things to do out there. Um, especially because of the storm. The main reason I actually went out today is I wanted to see if there were any broken limbs or anyone was just completely laying over. Luckily, nobody 
nobody had significant damage. Um, so at this point, we've pretty much discussed all our topics. Um, does anyone have any questions or concerns? Oh, yes. Hold on. Let me see Raquel. Okay, Raquel, go for it. Um, as far as pop-ups, if we're going to be outdoors, can we bring our own to put over the table? So we're, we're the outside, the exterior that we're going to utilize is going to be the um, pergola area. So there's partial cover shade. Um, the fear with the pop-ups, Raquel, is that the legs will protrude and they'll just hinder the space that we have. So we're asking that um, all of the tables will be under a semi-covered space okay. um, with some filtered sun. Um, you should be fine in the mornings. It's just, you know, after 12 perhaps. But the good thing is that the sale will be done by 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when the heat is out, we'll be over. It'll be over. So to answer your question, no, they prefer no pop-ups. Okay. Sorry. No problem. All right. Ron should be coming back in. Um, we lost you, Ron. So you've got to unmute. Okay, asked to unmute. I did. I just want y'all to know I did this with my 10 year old niece and my five year old nephew. They're pros at this. Like, well, my battery sort of went out. <laughs> uh, what, um, I, what I was saying, I've, I've been restaking a lot of, a lot of the uh, stakes, and it, mainly because they're not tied, tied up correctly. And every time I go out there, I go through and retie everything. And uh, it, every time we get a rain like this, the soil loosens up, of course, and then the thing slips down, and you got to retie it. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go out there probably uh, tomorrow or the next day and check them again. And as, as far while while I'm thinking of this, uh, if we have that the uh, work day on the twentieth. If we, can, if we can fit a Epsom salt in, because it'll be due for the Epsom salt. I've been doing it, I've been doing that once a month. So definitely we can, we can fit it in because we'll be looking at, um, let's see, June 20th. Uh, we just don't know what's going to happen, but we may have to look at selective pruning. A lot of those trees, as it gets warmer, you know, they start to really grow. We may have to cut some leaves depending on if they have any pest on them. So certainly we can look at um, doing some Epsom salt at that time as well. We'll, hey, we'll as much help as we can get that day for sure because we have a lot to do in the greenhouse too. Somebody had a question? Hey Ron, when are you thinking about going out there? Uh, I'm thinking about going out there tomorrow probably. Oh no, I not, can't do it tomorrow, Friday. I might be going out Friday. About what time do you think? Around, around 10 o'clock or so. But it's good. I should I, be able to meet you out there. I, I, I've definitely been needing help, but I understand this COVID-19 thing is going on. But I'm out there once a week. I turn the water on, got somebody to turn it off. I weed. Uh, Etc. Etc. But I'm keeping it going, and it's no big deal because uh, everybody's everybody's uh, stretched out a little bit. I understand too. Some people are even afraid of this thing. But I'm out there taking care of things. And anybody wants to help, just let me know. My number is nine three seven help. You can't forget that. <laughs> okay, got it. All righty. So we're pretty much um, done with the meeting. We're just going to need, um, I believe, a motion to adjourn, unless y'all had some other topics we had not discussed. Wait, I have one. I have one more thing. Yes. Mr. Yuri, I've got a lava flow and a lot of beauty that I'm going to donate. I don't know when you want it or if you want it soon or whatever, but just let me know and I'll bring it up. And I also need to know 
where those plumerians that you put in so I can run a water line to them too. Okay. Um, yes, I believe I took pictures of where they're at or I'll see on, on the map, Sherry's old map, and then we'll mark it out. But I did check all of them today and they have some pretty good growth on, on all of them, I guess, from the rains. How about the hog damage? Hog damage, damage actually looked very good. What I saw instead was some kind of strange trail of ants that was coming from like where the water is off to the um, to the plumeria grove that I hadn't seen before. So we're probably going to have to apply some um, orange oil there. Well, I, I applied blood meal around all the plumerias, and that's to keep the hogs away because they did a lot of damage. But I think we got them under control finally. <laughs> so for any of you who have not been out there, um, there were very large ruts in the Plumeria Grove around where the Moraini collection is. And um, Carol did say that they had been having problems with um, the hogs. So the other thing that before the rain hit that we had noticed was a lot of our irrigation lines were nowhere near the trees. So we had to take them, put them back closer to the tree so we're not sure if it was the hogs going through there what what might have caused that but when we're turning on the water whoever may be volunteering that's one thing we need to be mindful of is just don't turn it on go and do some spot checking on the irrigation lines because quite a few were no longer anywhere near the tree and, and when they're when they're on by the way if you look for the line that's coming in you'll see water coming out the end that's how you can tell that each tree is going to not disconnect or something. And the hogs, I think the hogs are going to damage to the lines too. All righty, and let's see, anything else going on? Yes. Um, can you talk about the picnic in July around everything else that's going to go on that month? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's like two months away. Um, it is. So <laughs> we have to have another meeting about that because here's the thing, if the garden centers, if the garden senior center does not reopen in July, we're back at looking for another venue and possibly an outdoor venue. And then, you know, looking at the hours that it would be held, um, July is generally, um, pretty hot. Um, so again, I, I don't think we had it on the agenda and it's something I know we need to discuss. I was just hoping we could table that one like maybe until next month. I don't know how the rest of y'all. Sorry think. about that. <laughs> but we should uh, start no. thinking about it. No, definitely. Definitely. Because I saw it on the newsletter. I was like, got to think about that one. Um, you know, having food outside and all that good stuff. Uh, we, we can do it. We're a creative bunch. Um, you know, we like to uh, problem solve. We just haven't gotten that far yet. We're trying to get, we're trying to make it to the plumeria cell. So. <clears throat> hey Mel, I forgot to add, we, we did have new business that we brought up during the board meeting with regards to the Christmas party. I don't know how we skipped the July sale, but um, so this year we are going to um, have it catered. So by catering it, I, I think we need a motion for that, do we? Yes. Yes, okay. So the, the proposal is to have it catered, um, meaning that the meats and the sides will be provided by the society and members will be asked to um, participate by bringing desserts and drinks beverages um, along with whatever else if we do a white elephant um, so Steph can you make a motion for that <laughs> I second there you have it is anyone opposed Thank you. All right, so at this point, we're really just kind of waiting on um, 
Ray Allison to enter. He uh, did he did message me. He stated that he had some computer difficulties. He is going to look at either trying to jump on on his phone. Said his computer chose um, a very inopportune time to do an update. Which actually, now that I look back on it, guys, I think that's what my issue was yesterday too. I was having like I was so frustrated. And once I shut my system down, it was like, you have like 15 updates. So I was like, oh my God. So I hadn't done any of my updates. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Make sure we didn't miss anything else um, before we adjourn the meeting. Sherry, make me a sandwich, please. You have a bite of my food, I'm eating it right now. <laughs> uh, the nice thing is, is we can drink during these meetings now. You can't really do that at the Garden Senior Center. <laughs> if you want a glass of wine, <laughs> but oh. it's possible. So um, while, we wait, while we wait for Ray to, to enter, um, let, let's talk about this. <clears throat> Our next meeting after this meeting in the... Um, In the newsletter, I believe it's in um, September, correct? September. So in the event that, again, you know, we're looking at the, the July picnic, we're looking at the next meeting in September. 23rd. 23rd of September. We may be doing another Zoom meeting for our general meeting. Um, I know it's a little different, but we, again, it, we've got to keep things going and we've got to keep discussing things um, in this manner as well. This session is going to be recorded so others who were not able to participate today can um, watch the video, they can listen in, they can send us emails um, if they have some concerns or need other things addressed. Um, so what I'd like what I'd like to ask you all is, is just a, a little bit of feedback from you all. How, how did this work today for y'all? Pretty good. This is great. This is great. And Melissa, thanks for taking the initiative to get everything done like this and all your staff. This is great. Oh. Yeah, I like this. I had to get rid of the reverb between Terry and I. Okay. All right. <laughs> so it's, it's, this was our fourth meeting. The first three were utter failures. Okay. Nothing worked. <laughs> Nothing. So there's a lot of watching tutorials and making sure your updates are on your computer. Um, but some individuals like Terry today, she's using her cell phone. So you just, so you all know if you don't have, it, but you have a smart tab or you have a phone with a, um, a camera, you can go ahead and use your phone and log into the Zoom meeting. So that's the nice thing as well. We're using just to our clear. Cell phone. Well, and it's very easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And We're on the cell phone. Okay. And uh, just to clarify, when Melissa says this is our fourth meeting and all of the others were failures, she's referring to our Zoom attempts. We have been uh, practice running this one for a little while. Um, I am following the comments on Facebook, and Carolyn Arwood has said Aloha Luau's would love to perform again for the Christmas party. So... We've got entertainment. Okay. Yay. Just have to find a venue just in case. Um, <clears throat> I, I do have to say as well, I'm not sure if y'all have been following the social media, but um, we, like Lolita said, we, we have a lot of people who want to travel in for this cell. They're excited. And especially since right now, the Plumeria Society of America cell is up in the air. We're not sure that's going to occur. People want plumerias. We have plumerias. So um, we definitely have a lot of engagement right now on social media. So that's really exciting. Um, behind me here, this image here, this is a color page if you want to print it for kids. Um, they can go ahead and draw. I did put on one of the posts, um, this is just a, 
the donation out of out of my own garden but I, I let the kids know hey if you submit these in we can vote on one and someone you know a kid anywhere between the ages of two and I believe it's 12 can win a plumeria have their first plumeria so if you know any kids between the ages of two and 12 get them a color page and have them color it and submit it to us um, it's a lot of fun to see the kids out there. It's a lot of fun when Larry has his son helping us. Um, a lot of our younger volunteers, um, they seem to enjoy it out there. So we just need to keep trying to encourage um, younger individuals to participate, get to know us a little better. All righty, we're just uh, still waiting at 7.57. Let me just text him, see where he's at. Are y'all ready to adjourn the meeting? Yep. So we can go into, we're going to motion to adjourn the meeting, correct? No motion. I second. All righty. That sounded like Ron and Kevin. Thank you, guys. No problem. <laughs> Okay, so I just sent him a message. And if all else fails, well, we tried. We, we did a test run yesterday, and if something doesn't work out, well, <clears throat> at least we had the general meeting. And again, it's wonderful to see all of you. We miss you. To his, to his credit, he did do a test meeting with us, and everything worked okay yesterday. So he's putting in double duty trying to do this for us, too. So it's really... Everybody's chugging along. Looks like he's logging in now, so he might actually be joining us in just a minute. Can you read that? Just bless. <laughs> yes, we are. All right, so we're just going to wait. <clears throat> you can talk to me. If Ron says something, when he comes on, we're going to mute it again okay. so that the guy can talk. And if he'll touch. All right, so going back to my Zoom meeting with my nephew and nieces. They wanted to check out my cat houses that I've been making. Um, they were like on it like this. Each of them had their iPad and their like their headphones, and they were like giving me tips, like do this, do that. No, don't, do, no, get get over here. And I was like, oh my goodness. Um, so these, I have to tell you, these kids, since they have to do this for school right now, they are amazingly fast at it. It just comes so easy to them. I'm not sure if any of you have grandkids you have in the home and they're working with it, but um, they have no problems whatsoever. I heard one kid made like a screen that says no connection <laughs> for his class. Uh, he got into a little bit of trouble for that. <clears throat> All right, so um, I received a message from Randy. A potential venue for the summer picnic could be the South Texas Botanical Garden and Nature Center. So we're definitely, um, at our next meeting, we'll definitely look at that. Um, they ran out the Education Center at Rose Pavilion. And again, we just have to look at what uh, county ordinances we may have. I just admitted Ray Allison into the group. Here he is. 
and I believe he's unmuted himself, so I'm just going to mute myself, and the floor is yours, Ray. Okay, let's try again, Ray, because we couldn't hear your voice. Um, guys, do y'all want me to go ahead and spotlight Ray if we can get his video on and we'll take it off the panel view? Yes? All righty. Just got to get that. Um, send him a message. All right, so I see his lips moving. I just don't hear anything. Do y'all think it's on my end? Hey, where did he go? Let's see, is that Trey calling in from an 8-3? Can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, Melissa. How is South uh, Texas? It's hot. It's hot and humid. Well, We're we, got a little rainstorm. we got a little rainstorm this afternoon, and I have plumeria trees to pick up. So we had some of the same thing here today. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and spotlight the video on you. And there you go. Hello. Let me arrange this a little bit better. You would think I'd get better at this. Good evening, South Texas. Now, Melissa, how are we going to do this? Are you going to ask questions, or um, how do you wish for this to go? Um, at this point, we've muted everybody, and we would just like you to speak about the topic of registering seedlings. And once you're done, we can go ahead and unmute the um, participants, and they can ask questions. Um, but we want to be able to have you um, present without any interruption. Okay. Well, I don't mind interruptions. That's how life works, right? Yes. Um, Registration of a seedling is one of the most exciting things that people can do in the plumeria world. And you're talking to someone that absolutely loves seedlings. I've got several hundred of them out in the yard right now. And if I am correct, you guys have a few uh, registrations pending with the Plumeria Society right now. And the uh, registration uh, process is fairly straightforward in that a plant needs to go through three bloom cycles in order to be eligible for registration. So you guys may laugh, but a two-year-old seedling would probably not make it. Um, we're not going to 
quiz you guys a, a whole lot on, uh, you know, a five-year-old seedling would probably be more appropriate. A six-year-old, seven-year-old, anything like that would be uh, more appropriate for registration. And uh, Mark Wright, uh, who has been our president, heads up the uh, registration um, committee here at the Plumeria Society of America. And he asked for a rather detailed summary of the plant, which includes raw photos, which are a little different than JPEGs, and that's in the submission package that we can send to you. And one of the things that you have to do is take consecutive pictures of the seedling from not only the front on graph paper that is roughly an inch by an inch, so it's real easy to gauge the size of the bloom. And of course, with the color photo, you can see the colors and that sort of thing. You, you do the front, the back, the side, and then you do some inflows. And then if at all possible, you take pictures of the tree and its natural habitat to show the size of it. We want to know about the leaves. We want to know about the growth habit of it, the, the, the leaf habit the uh it's just a whole lot of things about the plant and once we have all that we submit that to uh and we are the plumeria society of america which you guys are just absolutely great friends of we are the worldwide registrar for plumeria and all of this stuff goes to the royal botanical society in london for their consideration and they get back to us pretty quickly so um in, in in very very brief that's the uh the summary of what it takes to register i mean there is some paperwork there are a lot of questions once you submit there could be other questions asked after you submit it and i think there's a, a fee of uh something like 35 dollars. i'm looking at my notes if, if you wonder why i'm looking down so um uh, in brief, that is the uh, the summary of uh, what we do to register um, a plumeria. And I, I covered this recently with Melissa and your board. We currently have something like 502 different varieties of plumeria. Some are pending, some are actually done. And the name can also be really, really important. Um, Penang peach as a uh, an example cannot be registered because it refers to a fruit tree. Um, you have to be careful with the name so it doesn't get kicked out. Peach Penang would probably work, uh, but Penang peach would not work. Um, and that's just one example of uh, something that would not probably work terribly, terribly well. So the name is important. They ask for you to submit a name and a backup name. And if either one of them are controversial, uh, we call you and ask for the, the next choice that you, you might have. So with, uh, with my quite short presentation. Melissa, do you have questions that you would like to ask? Yes. Um, in the last year, you know, let's see, going back to 2019, before we had all these issues with COVID, um, what are some of the countries that, that came to you guys and they wanted to register? Did you have individuals outside of the United States wanting to register? We have quite a few outside the United States. If I have not sent you the uh, list of names and people who have registered, they're all over the world. Um, of course, the United States dominates the, uh, the naming list since we do so much uh, here, but we are not, um, they're everywhere, everywhere. And, and you know, you, you'll be surprised, mostly tropical. There aren't a lot there, you know, we don't see a lot of them from Minnesota or Canada. Well, that's 
that's good to know. Um, we do, again, um, have, I believe, three that we're going to try to register. Uh, I have not been in the society as long as others, but one, I believe, is uh, called Fred's Passion. It has these huge, beautiful blooms, white, yellow, and pink. Uh, it's very fragrant. It's a consistent bloomer. Um, we haven't seen anything close to it yet registered. And then we have um, another, we really don't know where it came from. We've been really trying to reach out. So we want to at least try that process. It'll help us go through that learning curve of registering. Well, the source of the bloom is not that important in that um, seedlings are the perfect thing to register because you, know, you typically know the mother, but you don't know the father and or you don't know the the pollinator so that is typically the best thing to to register i mean right now that's what they go off of they go off of you know if you if you know the mother you you have to disclose that of course you're you're not going to know the pollinator um but then you get into the growth habit of the plant is it tall is it compact is it dwarf does it spread you know, what do the leaves look like? And, and and that will tie it to a whole lot of things. We have not gotten as far as DNA for plumeria, and I suppose that's probably coming, but not yet. So we, we go off of uh, seedlings are the perfect example of something that is very, very good to register. Virtually any seedling could be registered. Do you have any that you're trying to register in your own personal collection? Well, I have a couple that excite me enough that uh, for those of you who are friends of me on, on Facebook, my current uh, Facebook profile picture has me and a, a side picture with a, a big plumeria and, and Lisa, our treasurer, took that picture at a board meeting last uh, year, and the bloom on me is about seven inches across, and it's a seedling of Mary Helen Eggenberger, and it's kind of a, a pink slash peach fragrant uh, bloom, and um, several people in the Plumeria Society have mentioned to me that I should register, and if I do, last year was the first time I got blooms out of it. I've now moved it to a more prominent position uh, on my uh, property that gets better sunshine and better everything. And Mary Helen doesn't seem to be enjoying it. So I'm hoping, <laughs> she, she, she's finicky. I'm hoping that, uh, that she will pay attention and bloom and you know, recreate what she did last year, but uh, uh, right now um, she's not enjoying the party. So hopefully, yes, that would be one that I like a lot. I've got a couple of others that I'm hoping will bloom and we'll see what they look like because my absolute passion with plumeria is seedlings. I greatly, greatly enjoy them because you do not always know what you're going to get. Okay. And you know, I, I failed to have you introduce yourself and give us a quick bio uh, before we had you start presenting. Could you just give us a quick bio real quick? Well, my name is Ray Allison. I am the current president of the Plumeria Society of America. They first elected me in 2018. And I'll have to admit, I'm not too sure that I understood or knew what I was getting into then. They re-elected me last fall, so I'm now the 2021 uh, president, and with our bylaws, I am term limited, so I can't run again. I do understand a lot better what I'm doing now, and um, I grew up uh, overseas, not in Texas, in a place that uh, the Bahamas, where plumerias were trees. And uh, I don't know that I fully understood growing up what they were, but I do now. And it took coming to Texas for me to understand what they were. 
and I got my first plumeria right after college in the early 80s and she's still out in the backyard along with uh, something like 500 others. <laughs> I'm going to let, um, thank you very much for that. I'm going to let some of our other members who are currently on the Zoom meeting ask you questions. They may have some Please questions. Please do. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Sherry. Okay. What, so, what, what, first of all, what is your name? My name is Rebecca Moya. Oh. Hi, and, Rebecca. Hello. And I was living in Corpus for five years, and now I'm back in New Orleans. And I have a seedling that I planted in June of 2017, and it bloomed last year. You're and lucky. It, and it is here in Louisiana, so I wasn't able to see it in person bloom, but I was sent pictures by my mother of it. And all I got off of it was picture. And then when I came home, I took a ruler and measured the girth of the stem and the height of it. But that's all I have is as recordings. Do you not record on the graph paper till the third bloom cycle, or do you have to follow the tree all the way through the third cycle? Well, as I understand, we need a bloom on the graph paper and it needs to be in the three bloom cycles of the plant. Okay. Most people choose the last bloom cycle, not the first, because the last one is typically the better one, the more mature one, and uh, things work better on the third. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a two-year-old plant is not going to be as healthy and proficient, one would think, as a five-year-old plant. So, you know, the fact that you have a history, keep that, that will help. But with the uh, one inch by one inch graph paper and the requirements, you should probably wait to, uh, either this year or next year and, and do it then. Okay, so it's not blooming. It doesn't have an inflow for this year. So I have to wait till the third time it blooms, not the third year after it's bloomed. Three bloom cycles. Okay. And that's what's, that's what's tough about some areas because like I was talking about my uh, seedling of Mary Helen Eggenberger, um, I don't know if she's going to bloom this year. She bloomed wonderfully last year. I was very happy with it and uh, perhaps I should have left her in the place that she was but I changed around my deck and my patio and that was not possible to do so I, I, I moved her to what I thought was a better place. So far she's not agreeing. Okay, um, I understand more, and I haven't moved the pot. It's been in the same place since mm, 2017. <laughs> I won't move it. Well, the spot's important, but repotting and fresh soil and good fertilizer are also very important with Plumeria, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've repotted it as it's gotten bigger, as it's gotten bigger, but always put it back in the same area. Never. Well, and, 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 and I need to, I need to learn from you that, you know, Mary Helen needs to be moved back to her spot, even though I rebuilt that area of my house and it's different, but the spot's still there. There's just a larger deck and it would be kind of in the way we'd have to walk around it, but okay. Flamarias don't care. No. <laughs> Take a deep <laughs> Yeah, take a deep <laughs> Have a glass of wine. You know, it's all good. <laughs> okay. That's what I just needed to know. When do I, when, when is the recording that's best to submit? So I'll wait. Well, you, you have to record three bloom cycles. And uh, I don't know that it absolutely has to be the last one. You know, most people would probably pick the best one. So the graph paper and, you know, how you photograph it, that's all real important. Since you, you have a history last year, but you don't have pictures on graph paper, if it blooms this year, that's still a history. Even if it doesn't bloom and it blooms next year, you, you still have three years. Okay. I hope hey, that helps. Thank you. This is Randy Snyder, a question for you. Hi, Randy. Hey, 
you said that there's 500 plus name varieties. Does the PSA or is there a, a website or a list of these, of these varieties with photos that we can go and look at? I mean, when you go online, you can find different listings and different, different um, vendors sell stuff. But is there really a good finalized listing of what's out there? We have a list that we have compiled and we published it last fall. Uh, Melissa, do you have that list or do I need to send it to you? I do. Is it on their website? Oh, wait. We, and Randy, the, the list does not have pictures on it. It has names, it has who registered it, it has when it was registered. It has a few details about it, but it, they, they don't have pictures. I would love to have pictures but apparently we're not efficient enough to do pictures as well as names. I um, wish were. <laughs> so we do have the list, Randy, and they did send it to me. I'm not going to lie. I had not sent it out because um, it, it was my understanding, and we are paid members, so it should not be an issue, but it was my understanding we're not supposed to circulate that list unless you're a member. You can, you can circulate it to anyone that asks for it. Okay, good, good. So we have it, Randy, and I'll get it on over to you. It just does, like you said, it doesn't have pictures, but it has the register. It doesn't have pictures. I would love for us to have pictures. I happen to love things that have, you know, pink and red in them. And, you know, if we had pictures on that with all the registered names with pink and red, they would all be in my garden. Um, <laughs> You know, I have lots of yellows that, you know, I would probably move out to make room for reds and pinks, but just just a preference on my part. Yes. Thank you very I, much. Go I ahead. have a question as well. Um, on your website, can we get a copy or um, and a copy who am I talking to? Package? I'm sorry, my name is Bernice. Um, Hi, Bernice? Yes. Hi, Bernice. I Hi, I wanted to find out where I can get a copy of the registration package because it sounds like you have to start early in the process to start documenting the growth of the plumeria. And so I would like to know what the steps are. So if there, where can I get a copy of that registration package? Well, Melissa had mentioned that uh, she felt like that was a little difficult. Um, I will get a copy of that from our registration committee in emailable form and I will send that to Melissa as quickly as I get it. It may take a few days because not all of our members understand that there is something called the internet. Um, just, just to interject real quick, um, the, the registration paperwork is on the Plumeria Society of America website. Anybody can add. Oh good. See, oh, Melissa, yes. you know things I don't know. <laughs> but what is not accessible are those particular photo sheets. And so that's where we have to reach out to Mark Wright and then he may Mark Wright would have to send those because those mm -hmm. are literally, they look like graph paper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you, when you see them, um, you may not know that this has to go to the, uh, the Royal Botanical Society in England and London. Uh, but, I, I, I grew up and went to English schools. And when you see it, you immediately think, oh God, that's English. It's gotta be English. Americans would never do this. So, but the, yes, the graph paper does need to, and it's, it's a particular type of graph paper that you, there's a hole, you're, you're supposed to put a hole in the middle of it, put the flower in it, so it, the graph paper measures the size of it. And then you turn it on its side and you take a picture of it on the graph paper. You do a couple of photos on the graph paper to show the size of it literally on the graph paper. And it's also something that I must admit I don't completely understand. It is something called a raw photo that must be sent to the uh, Royal Botanical Society, which is a little different from what we normally do with JPEGs and all the other common uh, varieties of photos. So, and those particulars will accompany the graph paper. So you know the particular type of photo that you've got to send. And it is a particular type. Okay, thank Ray, you. I have a question for you. Sherry Hallbrook here. Uh, Hi, Sherry. Hi, how are you doing, sir? Thanks for all this information this evening. 
Uh, well, I hope I'm helpful. And yes. you, you, you guys have been making me talk so much. You know, Melissa told me to grab a glass of wine so I would be relaxed. And I haven't <laughs> even had a sip. <laughs> <laughs> a question for you uh, is several probably to lead to. The two plumerias that we would like to try to get registered, we've had in our gardens for a long time. And through the years, I've taken pictures of them in raw format, but not on graph paper, uh, just for our calendars and stuff like that, so that, that I have. So we don't know the parent. So we don't know the history of where these came from. Can we register something like that? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight that it is, my, it is my belief that you probably could. Um, there is a questionnaire that you've got to go through, Melissa. You got the questionnaire from the website that you have to go through and you have to answer the questions of. Seedlings are easier than, because I have some in my garden that I've had for a long, long, long time, and I have no thought that I would register those because, mm -hmm. I mean, they're almost, you know, they're old enough to go to college. Um, <laughs> and thankfully they're they're not um and i and i also think that they're common varieties they just didn't have a name um but anything like that you can go through the registration process seedlings are easier because you disclose it's a seedling you disclose who the parent is but you don't know who the father is so it is literally a new variety an unknown variety I'm not exactly sure how they would handle that other than, you know, if it looks like celadine or slaughter pink, um, hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. Um, but you see where I'm going with that. Yeah, and luckily these two are totally different from very common ones that you see. So, oh, good. So that's I, need a cut, that. I need a cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they are. Yeah. <laughs> Come to a work day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they I hope I've helped. Beautiful. I don't know that I completely we, answered your question, but I hope I've helped. We yes, do did. have one question from one of our viewers. Um, they asked on Facebook, is there a way to determine the age of a plumeria tree? Oh, goodness. Oh, that's like asking the age of your last date. Um, I'm not sure that there is. I mean, I would suppose and guess in answer to that, that once DNA comes in a, a little bit more and is more popular and more prevalent with the plumeria world, that you probably could. Um, I've got a couple of trees in my yard that are over 30 years old, but it's only me that knows that and the fact that they're 14 feet tall. Um, but in answer to that, I'm not sure there is an exact way to my knowledge. And there could be other people out there that know better than I, but I'm not sure to my knowledge that there is an exact way to date a plumeria tree. I don't think you can do it like, uh, you know, the ring test of an old oak tree. I, I don't think that works. Okay, thank you. Um, that's good to know. Any other questions from our group uh, members? I'm good here. All right, well, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, we did learn a lot. And if y'all get a chance, please try to visit the Plumeria Society of America website. You will find information there as far as the registration forms. Uh, but again, if you need any of the graph paper, you're going to need to reach out to Mark Wright. He is on the board for registration. And uh, if you have any difficulty with that, uh, reach out to Melissa. Melissa, you can reach out to me. And, you know, in closing, I think we've all been greatly affected by what the COVID-19 things that have gone on in all of our lives since, you know, mid-March. Um, I hope that many of you know we have not 
made a big public announcement about it, but we have canceled our June 13th uh, bloom show and sale. And we were notified today by the venue that they weren't even going to be open for it. We canceled it before we knew they weren't going to be open because we suspected they weren't going to be open. We were officially notified today they weren't going to be open. We already had sellers that weren't sure about participating. We don't know what the buying public looks like. Uh, we have rescheduled the the June 13th to the first, uh, I think it's August 12th, the Saturday in August at Bay Area Community Center. Hopefully we can do it then. We don't know what the venue is going to require us to do. We don't know what things going on in the world will allow us or want us to do to make everybody feel happy, healthy, and safe. We all love Plumeria. We all want to go to a show.